Our guest today, Maddie J, comes in hot, Joey, just like your mic was during this episode. What? <laughs> what are you saying? I couldn't hear anything wrong with it. What, what are you saying? Man, it was super loud. But thank you uh, for not talking that often and allowing him to do his thing because he was sharing just ridiculous nuggets with us on, one, how the Turo space changed his life. He went from one car to three side cars. Side hustle. Yeah, one one car on the side hustle. To then ultimately how two, uh, uh, um, a complete total and then a stolen car led him to having 33 cars in all. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't want to even step in the way of his story because it was so compelling. And I think as you are looking for ways to create passive income, maybe yours isn't Turo. I don't know what it would be. But what, it, what you gather from this interview is someone took action to take something that was inefficient, i.e. his car that he wasn't using throughout the week, he works from home and all these other things, to creating the first domino that he knocked down that now has led to an incredible business where he's now had impact on so many people and building a team. Like he talks about leadership and building a team but man, what is your first domino? Like, that's what I'd love for you to, as you're listening to Maddie J, what is the first domino you're going to knock down that's going to create that kind of impact? Uh, no doubt. There's many, many lessons in here. One, patience, uh, following a process, documenting a process. Like our, uh, like, like our friend Sharon Shravatsa says that fame is the most efficient business strategy. How fame helped him recover his car, learn about where the car was, and ultimately had a really cool story at the end that I won't get away. So yeah, don't give don't, it away, Russ. Please. Don't end this podcast before you get to the end to hear how that whole thing came to a conclusion. And I think put a cherry on top of this podcast. So without further ado, let's jump into this podcast episode with our new friend, CEO, Matty J. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome to the show. If you have a vehicle in the driveway, you need to listen up. This is how we turn it into passive income with none other than CEO Matty J. Welcome to the show, Matty. Hey, Joey, what's going on, Russ? Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Thanks to God for allowing this to happen. I hope we do an amazing job feeding the audience today. No doubt. Uh, no, no doubt. I know you will. I don't know about Joey, but man, that's why we brought you here, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, th there, there's a there's a little red Corvette story, and I'm not talking about Prince. That hey. is is pivotal, <laughs> pivotal in your in, in your journey, man. Take me back to the moment where this red Corvette got stolen. Super Bowl oh, man. man, I did a, a lot of research on what cars I knew were going to be able to be rented out, especially in the market I'm in, Atlanta, Georgia, and it was a, a Corvette, specifically a red Corvette. Um, people love the sports cars, and I knew it was going to perform well, and it actually did. I was able to, to charge anywhere from 150 a day to upwards of 600 a day. However, I was looking forward to Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl weekend is the opportunity for me to charge two times, three times more than I typically charge during other seasons. So Super Bowl was in Atlanta, Georgia. I was ready to make anywhere from 800 to $1,300 a day. However, I ran into an issue. <laughs> So the issue was a couple of days prior to the Super Bowl, um, I left my car parked on the street. And typically, I allow people to do uh, remote, remote pickups, meaning remote pickups in this industry means you don't have to always necessarily be there to check in a guest to rent out your car. You can create a system and process where people can pick up the keys at the car, take pictures, and be able to drive off on their merry way. However, I made a mistake, a pivotal mistake. I left the keys in the car secured um, inside the lockbox. 
However, I forgot to lock the lockbox. I was on a rush to church and I didn't actually lock the door properly. Typically, I lock the door from my app. A lot of these newer cars, you can lock the doors from um, the app. So Chevrolet, they have an app, OnStar app, where you can lock the door. But I was such on a rush to go to church, I forgot to lock the door. So the key was exposed and available for anybody who just happens to check the car. And unfortunately, that very day, some individual happened to check cars that day, check the doors of cars that day. And lo and behold, um, I woke up um, the next morning to check to see where all my vehicles were because I have a tracker. And for some reason, the car, my red Corvette, wasn't in the park in the place where I parked it <laughs> at all. It was parked actually three blocks away. So I was a little bit confused. I wasn't too, my, my stress level wasn't at a 10. If on a scale of one to 10, it was probably at a four because I, at the end of the day, I knew where the car was. I know it wasn't where I parked it, but I knew where the car was. So I called my assistant to see if he can help me um, locate the car. So he drove down there, um, confirmed that it wasn't at the car place where I typically park it. And he confirmed that it was, um, three blocks away. So long story short, I called the police, police confirmed that the car is there, make sure that it was safe enough for me to pick up my car. So I go to my, my car, but the key is not there. So you typically I'm able to unlock and start my car from the app, but because the them stealing my car triggered the theft protection, I was able to turn on the car. So I had to call my insurance to see if they can tow the vehicle. And they told me they'll be there in three hours. Three hours passed, they didn't show up. So I go back to my office to drop off my, my employee because he took me there. And on my way back to the car, guess what? The car wasn't there. <laughs> Somebody might ask me, why did you leave the car after recovering and finding where your car was? I, would, I didn't have a heightened sense of security because... I was assuming some young adults took the car for a joyride and realized it's a high profile car and it was going to be a long term play for them. And they just dropped the car off wherever they felt like dropping the car off. However, that wasn't the case. The people who probably stole the car lived probably at the apartments where the car was at. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about like, you know, like, like, like smart criminals here, right? <laughs> they, yeah, they didn't think that, that thing through. At all. Smart, not smart <laughs> at all. And, so the car got taken. I have a tracker. So I see the car moving very fast south, south of Atlanta. And south of Atlanta is not too good of an area. So I knew that this was in a good situation. But again, my stress level wasn't at a 10. It went from a four to probably six because this car is now moving. So I call OnStar. I call OnStar. Hey, OnStar, can you guys help me out? Somebody stole my vehicle. Can you shut the car off? They tell me, first off, we can't just shut the car off while somebody's driving. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Even though I really want the car to stop, we have to still consider the safety of the person who's stealing the car and, more importantly, the people on the road as well. So you just can't shut down the car. So that's the first thing. The second thing I learned through the process was I actually have to have a police report before I can even have OnStar shut the car off. So I'm like, yo, how am I going to get a police report in the midst of this situation happening? And, and that's the protocol, which makes sense because the, the person on the call told me, the agent told me, well, the reason why you have to have a police report is because sometimes um, husbands and wives fight and they report to shut the card off and they really want to make sure that it's an actual situation. But I, didn't, I wasn't trying to think about that too much. So I basically hung up the call and called the police to see if they can help me in real time. So... I called Atlanta police, but they told me Atlanta police can't help me because now the car is in a different county. So I have to figure out how I can have the county uh, police help me recover this car. Long story short, they got away. Not only did they get away, they took the tracker out of the car. So I, I was waiting know. on that to happen. I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> at some point, this guy's got to know, wait a minute, this thing's hot. I got to get rid of whatever's right. tracking right. me. And that's what happened. He took the tracker right out of the car. I'm not going to tell you guys where OnStar puts this tracker. However, this gentleman <laughs> took it out and OnStar called me and said, sorry, sir, your car has been compromised. That's the word he used. And there's nothing we can do as far as tracking it for you. So my car's compromised. Car is basically gone. And mind you, I was in an Uber with my assistant 
following wherever this car was. We thought where this car was going the whole time. We're telling the Uber driver, get on the, on this freeway, make it right, make it left. <laughs> Not realizing that the tracker was actually a five minute delay. So we actually had zero hope to recover this car. <laughs> and the most beautiful thing about this process is the reason why my stress level wasn't a 10 is because I'm really good at documenting my journey, even in the midst of the turmoil. So I was actually giving live updates to my Instagram followers via <laughs> IG stories of my car being stolen. Because I knew that based on my experience, I can be able to turn this pain it's a profit. <laughs> Never hey, miss man. an opportunity. Never yeah, miss an opportunity. Always got to be marketing, man. Always. There's always a way. But the beautiful thing is it's self-therapeutic, too. So it allows you to focus on the solutions rather than the problem itself. And that's the reason why my stress level wasn't a 10. And at the end of the day, I knew that I had insurance. So even if the car, I never recovered the car, insurance will be able to take it. So there's all these different pieces that allow me to still maintain some sort of peace. Because I truly believe that certain things are either inevitable, preventable, or fixable. And that really, really brings um, peace to my mind. Unfortunately, of course, the car got stolen. So I go back to the crime scene where the guys took the car at the, um, at the apartment building. And I go into the apartment building and I ask them to see if they have a video camera of the person who was in the garage. So the person, of course, tells me, I'm sorry, but we can't just give our footage to any random person who asked for it. You need a subpoena. You need a police officer. And of course, that was a little bit frustrating, but I understood the process. And that's another thing. You have to understand the process and trust the process. So she told me I had to get a police report. I got a police report. The detective pulled the tapes. Lo and behold, he sends me a picture of the person who took the car. I had no idea who it was. But by God's grace, I posted a picture, an image on my Instagram stories and said, and does anybody know who this is? It took less than five minutes for somebody to send me a direct message to say, I know exactly who that is. I know his name. I went to school with this gentleman. And matter of fact, I don't even like him. <laughs> Give me information. So I was pleased with that. But then the next step was, okay, what am I going to do with this information? I gave it to the detective. The detective actually was surprised. I was able to find out who it was. I was like, yeah, we're doing your job for you. <laughs> you need a little bit of help <laughs> securing the, uh, the case. So the crazy thing about stolen cars is that when it comes to the stolen car, the number one suspect is actually the person who owns the car. <laughs> uh. so, so when I was able to provide the person um, who, who we believe stole the car, um, he was a little bit confused on why I was able to find out so quickly. So I have to explain that I have a large following. I had um, I have influence and I was able to find it quickly through my 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 network versus I already knew who it was. And I'm I'm not a, co a corroborator of this crime trying to get out of uh, pro uh, commit insurance fraud. I promise you, I'm not trying to commit insurance fraud. My car was stolen by somebody I do not know. And he told me. Perfect. Let me confirm that it was him. So he was able to track the car that he drove. He drove his own car to the location to steal, to pick up my car. So they was able to track the license plate of the vehicle that he drove and found out that it was his mother's car and confirmed that gentleman that I presented was the person, in fact, who had my vehicle. Well, no he wonder he needed your car. He was driving his mom's ride. He's like, dude, it's about to be super What's crazy weekend. about this is when I checked his Instagram page, he was in front of all these nice, fancy foreign cars taking pictures. I'm like, look, you never know <laughs> how people's real lifestyle is. But anyways, so a couple weeks actually passed. Mind you, I'm following his Instagram page to see his movement, where he's at. He's out, out at these clubs, at these events, out in these public scenes. And I'm wondering, I'm calling a detective, is there any update on um, putting out the warrant and or arresting this gentleman? I see he's just living his life. And he told me, and I, and humbled my, he had to, I had to humble myself when he told me this. He said, to be honest with you, Grand Theft Auto is on the bottom of our list of priorities. We have sex trafficking. We have domestic violence. We have homicides. And um, to be honest with you, Grand Theft Auto is at the very bottom. So we'll get to it when we get to it. So I'm like, dang, imagine me following the person who stole my car and he's just living his life. And there's nothing I can really do about it but be patient. And that's a skill that was tested in this process. So I'm really big at identifying opportunities for character development. And 
my, I didn't realize my patience wasn't as good until it was exposed in this situation. And because I was able to realize I was lacking in that area, I was able, I was able to embrace it more. I was able to embrace patience and humility. <laughs> so that was that process and proper communication skills. So, so in that process, then, how, are you not like, I, I know you have to be, how are you not, if, if you know who he is, you probably can know where he's at. Correct. How, how are you holding back from not just wanting to go Man, over oh there? Oh my goodness. So uh, to be honest, there's a couple of reasons. He, based on what I've seen in his lifestyle, he doesn't hang around the most uh, uh, law body citizens. I'm going to say that, say it like that. So um, what? That's, a, that's another thing about my faith. I, I don't want to take things into my own hands. If I trust the process, I'll be able to get better results by allowing it to happen how it should happen versus me forcing my own hand. So the same way that the um, the leasing office manager didn't just give me the tapes herself, um, it's the same way I wasn't going to just find the next location and just pull up and, and then cause put myself in a situation to be harmed or harm him. I didn't, I didn't want to be in that situation. Yeah, let's so, be true. Let's be real. Like uh, he, he's in he's in danger if you pull up. <laughs> right. Let, let's just be real. I'll, 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 I'll let you sell it. I'll let you sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I didn't want to put justice in my own head. So I just was patient. Uh, I was being real patient. And my insurance was like, OK, what do you want to do? Because your car still hasn't been recovered. You have 22 days to to basically submit your claim and basically get reimbursed because after 22 days, we then consider it stolen. We usually don't pay out for stolen vehicles um, within in, in the 22 day fr frame because you might recover the car and we don't want to pay you out. And then the car just shows up. So 22 days passed, the car did not show up. It was not recovered and they paid me out. Here's the blessing in disguise. When they paid me out for the vehicle, my credit score, I now have a paid off vehicle on my credit and my credit score shot up. Blessing, right? There's always a hidden blessing if you endure the process. So my credit score shot up. I was able to go to the dealership with even more experience than I did before. Because when I went to the dealership to get my first cars, I was very, not, uh, I was in the beginners, I was an amateur. But now I know how to negotiate better. I now know how to get the right deals. So I even got a better deal and my credit, because my credit score was better, I was able to get 33 cars in two weeks. <laughs> Think about it, I lost one car. And, and because that loss of a car, I was able to be blessed and receive 32, 33 cars. 30, yes. 33 I'm cars. sorry, did you, did you just say 33? Am I, that's the yeah. internet was lagging or something. <laughs> 33 vehicles that I knew I was able to turn from a liability to an asset leveraging the Turo platform and the rental market. Russ, I remember my dad specifically say to me, Joey, you got to go to college. I don't want you to end up like me. And you know what my dad was saying is in order for things to change, things have to change. You can't end up just like me. Well, I think, I mean, we, we as parents, sometimes we take on the burden thinking about our kids and, and how we want something better for them. And we want to know what will their future look like if I don't take action, if I don't do something different. See, in my house, I'm the role model. You're your kid's role model. And the buck stops with you. It's time to take action. If you're ready to take action, join us at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport and get started on your own journey to financial freedom. All right, let's jump back into this episode. I'm going to press pause there because... You didn't start there, right? So, and, and I want to hear the rest of that story. I know everybody, right. everybody else does too, but right. Right, yeah, I got to take you back. I got to take right. you back to the beginning before you ever got the first, before you ever had the red Corvette. Like, what right. made you think that renting cars was a good idea? Obviously, you started somewhere. Give, give us that backstory. Give, give us good a question. Back. Good question. So, I, I had my personal car, I had my Tesla Model S, it was a 2013. And I and this was the year 2017. So I I lived in Georgia since 2014 in this very specific area called Atlantic Station. It's basically a work play area where you really don't have to travel far to go to places. The grocery store is there, the gym is there, the restaurants are there, the everything literally is 
right in a walking distance within its community called Atlantic Station. Yeah, I've been there. Oh, it's awesome. There? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, amazing area. And because everything is there, I did not need to travel much. The com- I didn't need to commute places. I work from home, and most of my clients used to come to my office. I didn't have to travel much. Therefore, I didn't need a car. But it got to a point where I was working with higher level business owners, C-suite execs, and I had to go to their offices. And those Ubers were starting to be costly. And very costly when I actually was taking Ubers to go pick up checks, $10,000 checks for my marketing and branding and influencer branding services. And the pivotal moment for that situation where I realized I needed a car was when after I picked up a check from a client, I was waiting for my Uber driver for 20 minutes outside. And they were asking me, are you okay? Are you Do you need a ride? I'm like, oh, I don't think it's a good look. Then I just picked up a $10,000 check and I don't have a vehicle to promptly take me to my next destination. So I said, I'm going to get a new car. So that's what I did. I leveraged my personal credit. And my first car was a Tesla Model S. But I still had an issue. I needed the car when I needed it. But majority of the time, I wasn't driving the car. So it was a very underutilized vehicle. Mind you, my car note was $900 a month. Insurance, $300 a month. So I had $1,200 coming out of my account every month for a car that I only drove once a week, twice a week, maybe. So I had an issue with that, especially after reading um, a book called uh, by Dave Ramsey. I I ran into that book, and I didn't want to have too much debt. So I was looking and researching different ways to turn this liability on wheels to an asset making deals. So somebody introduced me to a website called Relay Rides, which is now called Turo. And he showed me how easy it was for him to upload his vehicle to this website, price it, put a description, make amazing photos, and have it live and listed. And as you wait, you'll have people book your car, and all you have to do is deliver it, Make sure the check-in, check-out process is smooth, and you'll be able to generate income. So that's what I did. I uploaded my car on a Friday, July July of 2017. I keep the Sabbath day. So on Saturdays, I'm in church primarily the whole day. So I need to make sure that I did everything on Friday. So I listed it on Friday, and it got booked that same day for $150. I was a soccer mom that was in town for her son's soccer game. She booked my car. I was a little nervous, but once I talked to her, I understood the process and I was able to deliver the car to the airport. Long story short, I was able to make $900 net profit renting out my car, my Tesla Model S, the first month. And because I'm very, very detail oriented and I'm really big on numbers, because I believe if you don't know the numbers, you can't grow the numbers. So I had an Excel sheet. Turo didn't provide day-to-day stats, mileage track, how much money. They didn't provide all those details. So I created an Excel sheet so I could track my numbers. And realizing that I was, um, I I had 3,000 miles put on my vehicle in one month. And I said, okay, this is not going to be a long-term play if 3,000 miles is being put on my car every month. So what can I do to eliminate how much miles is being put on my vehicle? And so what I did was, instead of offering 300 miles per trip, I lowered it to 100 miles per trip. And most people will be scared to do this because they think that if they offer less, you'll get less offers. (laughs) But that wasn't the case. I actually got more bookings and I raised my price. Most people are scared to do that. So not only did I go from $150 to $180, I also limited how many miles people can book and I got one more booking the month I changed it than I did the previous. So I was able to net profit $2,700 the next month versus the $900 I made the previous month. And a $2,700 cash flow compared to most um, cash flow businesses like rental, uh, home rentals, and um, it was not no comparison. I said, oh my goodness, if I'm cash flowing $2,700 a month with one vehicle, what would happen if I get a second, third, fourth, fifth vehicle? Or 33 Right. Mm-hmm. Go that right. I ended up getting two cars. The next car <laughs> was my Maserati after doing research. It's a high value car that I can get for cheap. I got the car for thirty thousand dollars. Uh, it was three years old, had low mileage. Um, it was certified pre-owned CPO. So I didn't have to worry too much about maintenance and all that good stuff. 
I got this vehicle and I was able to um, list that vehicle and I also got a Mercedes C300, which is an entry level luxury car in the Mercedes branch. So I got those two cars. So now I have three cars and I'm cash flowing, cash flowing, doing similar results to my Tesla. And then I said, okay, what, how can I get more cars? Mind you, I was getting these cars under my personal name. So this wasn't really a good idea. Having these cars under my personal name made this liability on my personal, my personal, my life. So if anything happens, they can attack me. But I wasn't thinking too much of that in the beginning process because I didn't know too much about credit and I didn't know too much about liability. However, I didn't know how much money I was making. <laughs> so long story short, my, my Maserati ended up getting crashed. I got paid out for that by insurance. And then I need to get another car, which was my red Corvette. And that's how I got there. I now have my red Corvette. All right. So th this is, by the way, as you're listening to this concept, to me, this is fascinating. If you haven't already heard me talk about this at some point, I have my oldest two girls going through Matty J's course. So Matty J has a course that teaches you how to do that really quick. Let's promote that. Where does somebody go, Matty J, to be able to get access to the course? Yeah, so we have a couple different ways to get engaged. We have the carrentalgame.com to get direct access. But I usually recommend people to take our free class first so they get acclimated with the industry. And you can get access to that free class at freetouroclass.com. So those are the two websites, freetouroclass.com and carrentalgame.com. All right, cool. Because I, I think this is important for, for those who have interest in this to know how to get uh, – immediately access and start going down this road so there is a process right there's everything in there that's going to show you how to um you know build a plan figure out who your customer is right figure out is, is the maserati the car for you is it is it the tesla is right. it just the camry right because the camry exactly. is the most rented car exactly well, don't hey don't forget the toyota avalon now <laughs> no nobody, oh, nobody you must have the toyota avalon <laughs> man <laughs> i did i used to and, I, and russ used to bust my uh, about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. I was like, man, dude, you're going you're gonna to get pulled over and the cop's going to be like, you stole this car. Where's that old lady you took this car from, man? Like, you can't do that to her. <laughs> well, we say in the industry, if it has wheels, it can make a deal. So there's no discrimination. <laughs> all right, so I, I want to fast forward now. I want to go back to you, you went from the red Corvette. You turned yeah. it in, uh, took the insurance company money. You got 33 <laughs> cars. And what what is that? What is that done, man? How, how does that change your life? What yeah. what sort of things have been um, come across your plate now that you've been able to um, venture down that road? Man, I've been able to live my dream life because the um, these vehicles are now assets for me, especially with the proper management, obviously proper planning, understanding your market, everything that you have to have when it comes to building a proper business. Um, before it started as a side hustle, because but the more cars I had, the more responsibility I had. And I started to need to hire a team. So one of the impacts in my life is I had the opportunity to create more partnerships and become an employer. All my life, um, as a digital graphic artist, web developer, marketer, influencer, I never really needed a large team. I created a lot of systems that allowed me to generate a lot of income by myself. However, in this business, if I truly wanted to uh, handle my growth and be able to scale, I needed human assets, partnerships. And I say partnerships and relationships win championships. So it developed my leadership skills, my recruiting skills, my attracting skills, my communication skills, and being able to be a, an employer and delegate um, the process. So that was one of the biggest things. The next biggest thing that happened or impacted my life was I, through the story of me getting 33 cars in two weeks, everybody wanted to know the process. Like, how did you get 33 cars in two weeks? So a lot of different podcast shows, TV shows, news networks were reaching out to me. CBS reached out to me. All these platforms reached out to me to hear my story. And the beautiful, ass, the most more impactful asset somebody can have is an amazing story. And allowing me to get on these platforms, I was able to share my process and build my audience, build my influence. And of course, through an amazing story, the next question people ask is, you know, how can I do it too? I'm inspired, I'm motivated, now I wanna be educated. And, and that's what birthed my, my program. It's not just a course, it's a program that entails, of course, the coaching, the calls, and the community. 
And there's no community without unity. So that's how I was able to have my life impacted through this this journey of mine to be able to impact others. All right. So I, I wanna I wanna finish our, our time together with the end of that story, right? Because mm. you you were sharing with us there's a really unique thing that happened. Obviously, <laughs> you found out through Instagram who the person was. Yes. But that's not where that ended. Talk at all. About that. At all. That's the crazy part of the story. So after the detective told me that Grand Theft Auto is a low priority and we'll get him when we get him, he'll turn he'll do something, he'll mess up and do something and like a uh, traffic light stop and then we'll get him. However, that wasn't God's plan. So as I mentioned before, I'm highly involved in my my church, my church organization, the Church of God. And I have a leadership role that gives me access to finding out new baptisms in branch churches. So the church I'm in is in Loganville, Georgia. However, there we have branch churches in a city called Marietta. So in the group me chat, I got a notification that we had a new baptism, a new member of our church. So I was really sleepy at the time. So I didn't really check the message. However, I got a call. I picked up the call from my um, my employee who is also a member of the church. His name is Dion. So Dion called me and says, Brother Matthew, you're not going to believe this. Check the group me message right now. So Dion knew who took the car because he saw the picture. However, lo and behold, I opened the group me chat and I see a new baptism in my church. And guess who it is? The same gentleman who stole, <laughs> who stole my car. I, my heart was racing. I, I'll never forget. My heart was beating hard. And the crazier part about it is, a couple of weeks before, I told the missionary at the church about what happened to my red Corvette. So he was familiar with the story, but he didn't know who took it. So I called my missionary. I said, missionary, you're not going to believe it. The person that you just baptized was the very one who stole my car. He said, no. There's no way. I said, it's him. So he said, OK, I'm going to talk to pastor and see what we're going to do to move forward. So pastor said, well, just let him um, make sure that he can go on about his way. But let him know the next time he comes to church, we'll bring it up to him. He came to church. He said, um, we know that you are you have a warrant for arrest and we know that you have a warrant for Grand Theft Auto stealing a red Corvette. And the reason why we know this is because the red Corvette that you stole is actually a member of this church. <laughs> the guy broke down. <laughs> why you didn't know whose car you stole at all? He broke down, started crying. That's what I was talking about there. Broke down, started crying. And missionary gave him a option. You can turn yourself in and um, uh, let, let, let the police know that you are turning yourself in or you can no longer be a part of this church. So he actually opted into turning himself in long story short. He was able to go on trial. I didn't press any charges on him, and I was able to get, um, um, reimbursed for the damages of what, what I went through, through him. And it was a huge learning lesson. And my biggest realization from this situation is that, um, sometimes a vehicle can be used as a vehicle to lead somebody to church. <laughs> oh, man, that's it, so it, cool. It, it's funny how things come full circle, man. The Lord man. is at uh, at work, and we and sometimes we don't want to wait. As you said earlier, we get impatient for those sort of things. Man. But man, um, it, it, I've been impatient, man. I've been impatient to get you on the podcast. Man, <laughs> I, I found out about you about two months ago. And I've been waiting. I've been waiting, man. I know you're a busy guy, so I'm so grateful yeah, yeah. that we got we got a chance to to share you with the audience. We we were only able to to touch on a fraction of right. this opportunity and who you are as an individual. So I um everyone right now go to carrentalgame.com or freetouroclass.com and check Matty J out. Obviously, you can find him on Instagram. You know he's on Instagram, right? Like be a part of his calling. Who knows? You may be helping him in the future with some of these cars that are out there. <laughs> yeah, man. I want to thank you guys so much for allowing me to share my story, be on this platform, and I have an opportunity to make new friends. Well, at, at least me and you, right? Uh, we yeah, can be friends. Like yeah, that. Russ. Okay. I would not be friends with Russ unless I, I, I'm, I'm grandfathered into that thing. So, um, but hey, Maddie, this has been amazing. Um, I, I I wish we had more time because there's all these questions going through my head. And I'm sure our audience yeah. is doing the same. So, yeah, check out carrentalgame.com or freetouroclass.com 
and uh, and get those questions answered so that you can start turning your vehicles. Maybe you don't have 33, but you got one that you could start right. that side hustle and who knows where to lead. So thanks right. again for your inspiration, Maddie. We really appreciate it. Thanks to God. Thanks to God. I appreciate you guys a lot. Man, absolutely. And thank you for listening. As always, if you found value here, um, like, rate, review, share this with somebody else so we can uh, share the same inspiration with them that you learned today from Maddie J. Have an amazing yeah. day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.